everybody. I'd like to welcome you officially to my X's and O's workshop. Over the last few years, I've been honing and refining this sequence to give total body openness, full range of motion, and just a feeling of general upliftment. It's literally my absolute favorite sequence. So I hope you enjoy it and uh, let's get started. So what you might want, if you have yoga blocks at home or if you have a yoga blanket at home, great. But if you don't, what I did is I just took two towels from the bathroom and I rolled them up so that they're about the size of a grapefruit. And then I put an elastic band around them to hold it steady. I also have some foam rollers, but uh, I think that just this will do for today. And then if you don't have a block, if you have a small box, something like this, or even a, a large book that you could do a calf stretch on, go ahead and make sure that you have one of those. So we're going to begin our practice today in a comfortable seated position. And uh, it's better to be this way than to be kneeling. So if you can, just sit cross-legged and interlace your fingers together and press your palms forward. Inhale the arms up overhead and we'll take 30 Kapalabhati breaths. So you take a deep breath in and then you're going to pull your belly back towards your spine in a pumping motion like this. shoulder back and down so that you've got a huge amount of space between your shoulder and your ear on this side. Now this is the beginning. So go ahead and take that hand and tuck it palm face down underneath your hip and then turn your head to the left and make like the thinker position or you can think onto your forehead or you can do the brain eater with your fingers. At the same time Collapse your sternum, round your body, and let the head drop down so you're stretching the back of your neck. Second position, turn your head sideways. You know, like you're asleep in bed and you have the pillow under your head and you're looking horizontal. Take your left hand and move it forward a little bit and just push your left arm down against your knee so that it starts to pull your chest forward. And then breathe apart your ear and your upper shoulder. You could even bend your right elbow to make that happen. So good already. Now, third position. Push down harder into your left arm. Rotate your chest a little bit to the right and allow your ear to fall towards your shoulder. So left ear to left shoulder. The eyes are looking slightly up at the ceiling and you feel this beautiful front side neck stretch. And go ahead and release the hand from underneath the hip and take both hands onto the right side of the neck and start to massage. And not some kind of chintzy, cheesy, very low cost massage, but give yourself like a, uh, like an amazing massage that you're getting somewhere on a beach on a tropical island. And then take your right hand and pull your right elbow down and move your right elbow to the right. If your shirt is slippery, you can put your hand underneath your shirt so that the stick is good and then move it. Take your other hand to the side of your neck and hook your wrist under your chin. I'm going to look up at the ceiling and I recommend you to take a deep breath. Go ahead and then go ahead and look up at the ceiling and pull your two elbows in opposition. I make a sound when I do this. The sound is like a horse sound. So you take a deep breath in and then you go. Oh, and then you sigh at the end. Oh. So let's try that again. Walk your hands back, squeeze, make a little massage in there. And then right elbow goes down into the right and left wrist comes under the chin. You're gonna make a sound like a horse and then you're gonna sigh it out. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, let your head fall back. And you're pulling your two elbows away from one another. Now, for the third round, take 
take your left hand behind your head so that it's close to your right ear. Your right elbow will go down into the right, and then you lean your head, <coughs> excuse me, back into your hand, and you turn it just a little bit to the right. So your right elbow is pulling down into the right, and your left elbow is pulling up and to the left, and the neck gets longer and longer and longer whew, because of it. Perfect. Release everything back to center. Now, if you want to feel why that was so effective, go ahead and make a shoulder circle. And you should feel that one of your shoulders feels great and open, and the other one feels a little bit tight. So we're going to do that second side, but change the cross of your legs first. Interlace your fingers, and then change the interlock of your fingers. Press your palms forward. Inhale, the arms come up overhead. 30 rounds, Kabbalah Bhakti breath. Take a deep breath in, and then pulse it out. Gently release your hands down. Take your left arm off to the side and let your head lean over to the right. Just roll your left shoulder back and down so your left thumb faces the ceiling. Uh, and then go ahead and sit on your left hand with your thumb facing backwards. Bend your left elbow and turn everything to the right. Come into like the thinker pose. You could do chin and fist together. You could do fist to forehead, and you could do brain eater, which was like one of those good high school jokes where they're like, what's this? A brain eater. What's it doing? Starving. Although in my case, it is feasting. You can drop your chin down just a little bit further. For the second position, turn your head sideways, pull your chest forward a little bit, and use your right arm on your right leg or on the floor to give you a slight rotation. Letting your ear and your shoulder come further and further apart. And then final variation, lift your chest up, rotate it to the left, and allow your eyes to lift slightly towards the ceiling. Perfect. And then release that left hand and take both hands to the side of the neck and put a little massage down on it. You can start at the top and then move to the middle, get down into the bottom, right? cover all of that area, and then take your left elbow and bring it down to the left. I'm going to slide it underneath my cloth, the cloth of my shirt so that it's sticky, and then to the side. The right wrist comes underneath your jawline, you inhale, you make those two sounds horse and sigh. Ready? Inhale. Exhale, gaze at the ceiling. Perfect. Back to center. Walk your hands back. Give yourself a massage again. Now, if you're not somebody that normally makes sounds, I would highly recommend it. Just because, you know, when stress level is high, the more audible the sound is, the more stress you're going to release. So, you take a deep breath in. Left elbow goes down to the left, right wrist under the chin, and as you exhale, <laughs> you let it all the way out. When you come back to center, keep your left hand where it is, but move your right hand behind your head, hook it just underneath the left ear, and then lean your head back into your hand a little bit, turn your head to the left, and pull the two elbows away from each other. So you're basically lengthening the side and the back of your neck. Good. You come back to center. Go ahead and let that go. Roll your shoulders back and down. Take both hands, interlace the fingers, and hook your hands behind your head. And then squeeze the elbows in and lift them up like a yawn towards the ceiling. With the pinky finger side of your hand, you're pushing your head away to make great space in the cervical spine. Awesome. As you release that, 
take both of your hands behind you, palms face down, and fingers pointing towards the back of the room. Then turn your knees up to the ceiling and scoot forward with your hips a little bit. I'm just going to walk my hands back so that I'm still on the mat, but you can move your hips forward. Bend your elbows and then lift your chest up high. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, both knees will fall over to the right. And when your knees come to the right, take your left leg and cross it over the right and then press into your hands and turn your head a little bit more to the right. Your right elbow can bend and you'll feel that full stretch through the left arm. Okay, uncross back to center. If you need to back up your hips to relieve the pose, go ahead. If you'd like to deepen the pose, you move your hips forward. Take a deep breath in. Let the knees drop over to the left side. And then take your right leg and cross your right foot over the left knee. I feel it already. Look to the left. Bend your left elbow and boost up through the chest. Uncross and come back to center. Push both feet firmly into the ground. Go ahead and back up what you have and then release your hands. With your knees bent up to the ceiling, go ahead and take your head forward out of your hips, hooking your elbows to the front of your knee, to the front of your shin, or even lower, and then telescope lengthen your rib cage out of your hips. I want you to take your head to your right knee. See if your nose will easily touch or how far away is your nose from your right knee. Mark it here. And then take your left elbow and tuck it underneath your left knee and push your left knee sideways. Bring your right hand down onto your right knee and push both knees away from each other. So not necessarily down, but out to the side. Can you resist this pose? So squeeze your knees up against your shoulder and your hand for a count of five, four, squeezing, three, two, and one. And on one, let go of the pressure, let go of the squeeze of your knees, let your knees push further apart and a little bit down. And then when you come back through center and over to the right, it's okay to let your left hip lift, kind of collapse down over it and just see where your nose can go now. It should be able to go much further. Let's try it on the other side. Take your head over to the left and just mark it. And then bring your right shoulder underneath your right knee and move it a little to the right and take your left hand down onto your left thigh and then push both legs up and against you. So you're going to squeeze in almost like a clamshell for a count of five, four, three, squeezing, 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 two, and one. On one, relax the legs. Continue the press apart and mildly down. And then sneak through center and it's okay to lift the right hip up off the floor. Just let your head come down and collapse over that left leg so that you can feel the possibilities that are opening for you already. When you come back to the center, let's do the same thing we started with. Hook your elbows to the front of your knees, pull a little bit, traction your head forward. Now you have two choices. If you know you're tight in the neck, you can just take your hands to the sides of your head and pull your head forward. However, if your neck's a little looser, take your hands to the outside of your legs and down, under your legs, and then up in the middle. Can you touch your chin? If you can touch your chin, go to your cheeks. If you can touch your cheeks, go to your ears or to the back of the skull, and then pull your head mildly forward towards your feet, lengthening out your cervical and your upper thoracic spine. Some of you may place your elbows on the floor. Others of you may be able to extend further out and then lower your head even more. And then carefully release, come on up, bend the knees and cross at the ankles, come over onto your hands and the knees for the beginning of 
Thread the needle and cat cap. So I'm going to do this one sideways for you just so that you can see what I'm doing when we reach thread the needle. Plant your right hand firmly down on the floor and inhale your left arm up to the sky. Inhale hot. As you exhale, come on down and just put your head on the mat and feel this first warm-up position. And let's do it three times in and out. Come on out, inhale high, and exhale, thread down. And again, inhale, take it high, and exhale, thread down. And one more, inhale up, and exhale, thread down. Stay down, pick up your shoulder and move it off to the right side of the mat. Now what's important here, if you're gonna get it, is that your abdomen has to move over too. So your rib cage and your stomach have to get out of the way of your right leg a little bit. So if you lift up, you can pull them out of the way and then touch your right knee with your left arm. The right hand will come up overhead. This is where it's complicated. So if you wanna watch it first and then get into it later, that's cool because we're gonna keep the right hand firmly on the ground so that we never somersault. Eventually, what ends up happening is you put the back of your head onto the floor and you look up at the ceiling. And your left arm might reach all the way back and hold on to your heel. This is a huge stretch. If you get the heel, you take your right hand and push it on the floor so that you can't possibly somersault over and then breathe into the spiral line in the back of the body for five, four, three, two, and on one, very, very carefully, move your body back to center. That's a huge opening. Place your hands under your shoulders. Inhale to look forward, and exhale, press around. Inhale forward, exhale around, inhale forward, and exhale round. Second side, left hand plants, right hand reaches up to the sky, inhale, and as you exhale, just take it down and go ahead and rest on your shoulder. Let's try it three times. Inhale, reach up to the sky, and exhale, carve under. Inhale, reach up to the sky, and exhale, curve under. One more, inhale, reach it up, exhale, curve under. This time, stay down. I'm gonna turn this way so that you can see what I'm doing. Go ahead and move your whole body to the left side of the mat, so your head will come off of the mat, go a little bit more to the side, and the secret is to really make sure that your abdomen and your rib cage twist as well. So if you lift up for a second, you pull your chest forward and then rotate, take your right arm across so that it touches your left knee anywhere. It can be wrist, forearm, elbow, tricep. And if your arm has gone far enough, you reach all the way back onto that heel. There's never a time that you don't want weight in that left hand because it supports you. You bring your head underneath and you start to look up at the ceiling, breathing into the back of your left shoulder and the low back and the hip for five, four, three, two, and one. On one, carefully release your hands, extricate yourself from the pose. Place your hands under your shoulders. Inhale, look forward. You can feel it happening. Exhale, press around. Inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, press around. Inhale, gaze forward. Now let's tuck the toes under and press back into downward facing dog. This down dog is a little bit different. So you separate your feet wide to the edges of your yoga mat. Turn your toes in and then walk your hands back about 15 or 20 inches. Take a deep breath in as you exhale. Go ahead and bring your right hand to the outside of your left foot. 
If you bend your left knee, can you reach underneath the heel, grab it tightly, and then push your heel down into the floor. Go ahead and pull your left hip backwards and move your left rib cage forward so the body can really open. I would bend the right knee to do that. So if your right knee bends forward, your left hip can pull backwards. Pressing into that left hand firm. Then release, both hands come down to the floor. Inhale in the middle. And as you exhale, the left hand will come to the outside of the right foot. Bend your knee. Slide your hand under the heel. And then push your heel down to the floor. For this one, bend the left knee so that your right hip can pull backwards and your right rib cage can pull forward and look underneath your right arm, opening it all up. And then releasing back to center. Now we did it in downward facing dog, so we're gonna do it in a standing forward fold, but not quite yet. Walk your hands forward a couple inches, bring your feet together, and do me a favor, inhale your right leg up to the sky. Walk your hands back again. Turn the toes of your left foot to the left. Walk your hands just a little bit to the right. Sorry, I think I confused that. Turn the toes of your left foot to the right. Walk your body to the right. And then take your right leg and you're going to reach it way out into space. So your right leg straightens, but your left knee can be bent and your right arm is reaching in opposition to the other side. I think of it as being a human weather vane. Perfect. And then from that position, go ahead, inhale your right leg back up to the sky, and as you exhale, step forward and place your back knee on the ground. This is a place where if you're at home, you might want that thicker book to use like a block. I'm gonna use this box that I have. Place your block or your prop, if you're using one, off to the right side of your hip, and then inhale your left arm up and over. Tucking the back toes under, try to lift your back knee off the floor, and then turn your left heel to the ground. Straightening both legs and lifting your right toes up in the air to get a maximum side body stretch. Good. Bend your back knee almost down to the floor. And then stretch and lift back up. Flex your right foot. And then bend again. And stretch and flex your right foot. Turning your belly, your rib cage all to the left. One more time, bend. And then stretch and reach up. Perfect. Take the left hand down to the floor. Step back. Down and facing dog. Walk your hands back a little bit and reach your left leg up into the air. Bend your left knee and roll your left hip open and turn the toes of your right foot to the left. Also walk your left hand a little to the left and then with your left leg, you're gonna stretch as far as you possibly can. In this case, I think I'm gonna go all the, all the way to the wall. So you can stretch all the way over to the side you can definitely bend your right knee. Reach it, reach it, reach it. And then inhale, take it up to the sky. And as you exhale, step forward and place that back knee on the ground. Grab your block, your book, ooh, or maybe even a Tupperware container. That would work. Place it off to the left. Take your right arm up to the sky. And then a little bend to the side. Tuck the back toes under. Lift your back knee up the floor. And then turn your back heel to the ground. And straighten your legs. The left foot toes are going to come up off the ground as you reach ecstatically to the side. Should you need to put your hand behind your head for next support, you're welcome to do so. Bend your back knee down towards the ground. And then stretch and lift up and over. Again, bend, back knee comes down, and then stretch, up and over, and bend, and stretch, up and over, perfect. Take your right hand down to the floor, go ahead and step that front foot backwards to downward facing dog, 
and try an easy vinyasa. Inhale, pull forward, push up position. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga. Both toes flip simultaneously, forward facing dog. Urdhva Mukha, Svanasana. Exhale, both toes flip, push back, Addo Mukha, Svanasana. Svana is the name for dog. And if you look inside this little Hershey's Kiss over here, we have our dog, Tegan, practicing with us today. Bend your knees, and then slowly step or hop to the front of the mat, keeping your feet hip distance apart or shoulder distance apart. I'm going to show this one turn sideways so you can see what I'm doing with my body. So if I open my feet up to the edge of the mat, bend the knees, and then drop the torso through the middle so that your fingertips are in line with your toes, you can take your right arm and tuck it to the inside of your right knee, bring your right hand back and hold on to your right heel, and then take your left hand and grab onto your right toes. Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, try to tuck your head underneath your left arm so that you're looking at your left foot. The knees can stay bent, or you can straighten them out a little bit. As you straighten, you're gonna pull your left hip backwards and your left rib cage forward, like everything that we've done before. Here's the extra added bonus. Once you're in this pose, Try taking your right hand to the inside of your left leg, and you're gonna push your inner left leg away from you. Then take your left hand underneath your rib cage and pull your rib cage over to the right. So your right hand is pushing your thigh to the left, and your left hand is pulling your rib cage over to the right. Drop back through center. Inhale, long flat back. Exhale, fold down. Take the left arm to the inside of the left leg and go ahead and see if you can capture the heel. Then take your right hand across to the toes, take a deep breath in, and drop your head underneath your right arm. So you're looking at your right foot. This is plenty. You can keep the knees bent or you can start to straighten the knees. And if you're getting that added bonus, go ahead and take your left hand put it on the inside of your right leg and push your inner thigh away. Then take your right hand and put it underneath your right rib cage and pull your right rib cage away from your hip. Basically it's a side bend over your left foot. So if nothing else, just lean your head over your left foot. Drop the whole thing back to center. Beautifully done. Bend the knees. Inhale, flat back, exhale, fold down. And then go ahead and walk your feet back so that you come into downward facing dog. Place your knees on the ground and push back to kneeling. This is where we're gonna need our props a little bit. So what you're gonna take is your rolled up blankets and you could use uh, two rolled up blankets or maybe four rolled up blankets and if you have Yoga blocks, yoga blocks will work as well. So basically you need four things. So if it's four rolls of blanket, perfect. If it's two blocks and two blankets, perfect. You can also roll up your yoga mat and use that. So whatever you've got that's rolled up, like a towel or a blanket, I want you to put it tucked neatly behind your calves. There can be two fists distance, separating your knees apart. And then take your hands back towards your heels and just rest into this. Now, usually the right leg is the tightest. So if you shift your hips over to the right and you sink your hips down towards your right heel, you're going to be digging out that right hamstring, that right calf muscle, and just giving it a little bit of deep tissue massage. Don't go too far or too fast. Then come up through center, inhale in the middle. As you exhale, go over the left leg. Think of your left hip as sinking down towards your left heel. And then bring it back to the center. And in the center, sink evenly through both hips. Right, so you feel it on both sides. I like to look at my feet. Usually one foot is tucked under me more and the other
other foot is out to the side, just make sure your feet are even. And then come up and move the two blankets, or the single blanket if you have just one, move it down a little bit so it's mid-calf, and then come into the same position, really getting your hips to come down between your heels. Again, we'll start on the right leg, so you shift your, ooh, I can't even on this side, you shift to the right, not your head, right, not your shoulders, but your hip, hip to the right and then down. And just feel that release happening in the back of the calf and the middle of the hamstring. And then we'll shift back through center, come over to the left, and you'll see me using my hands. Sometimes I'll just use my hand to put a little bit more pressure down. Again, it's not your head tipping over to the side, it's your hip coming over to the side and then down towards your heel. And bring that back to center, inhale. As you exhale, sink down evenly between both hips, uh, between both heels, and see if you can get those hips to come a little closer to the ground. This is for those of you that have a hard time coming into child's pose or even kneeling. Just for a second, you can see what I'm talking about. If you take the prop out and then you go back down, your kneeling position should be so amazing. And that just happened in maybe two minutes. So put that rolled up blanket or rolled up towel back behind your knees. You might only need one, right? But I'm gonna use these two because I have some extra props. You could do one blanket across both. Tuck your toes under and push back to a crouching position. And in your crouching position, grab the blanket and place it right up in the back of the knee. And if your heels are lifted, fine, right? If your hands are on the floor, fine. But those of you that know me and know me well, you know there's a second piece coming, and I call it Mrs. Pac-Man. So you're gonna take your other rolled up mat, it could just be a household pillow, ooh, a pool noodle, could be that, and you're gonna do this. <sighs> you're gonna Mrs. Pac-Man it. So you put it right up there into the crease of the hip, and then take your hands down. Look, if you don't have some of these props, it doesn't matter. You can just do it with one of them. You can do it with no props at all, and you're still gonna get an unbelievable experience. So stay steady. So the next piece, piece that we would do, we've got this amazing position. If your hands are on the floor and you need them, keep them. Keep your right hand on the floor, and then use your left arm, and just very, very lightly hug your left knee into your chest. If there's a sound that you want to make, like bleh, you can make that sound. And then switch and go the other way and just take your right arm and hook it around your right knee and give a little pull. And then come back to center. And when you get to center, go ahead and straighten your legs out. Remove one of the props, widen your legs towards the edge of the mat. Take a deep breath in, and then as you exhale, fold down. I would replace the prop deeper in, just to make sure you're in the right spot. Super bend your knees and place your hands between your feet on the floor. Here's where it gets a little tricky. Can you keep your right arm on the ground, bring your left arm across your low back, and either hold here or dive your right arm all the way under, wrap it around your right hip, and try to hook your fingers together. And carefully release the hands down to the floor. Second side, left arm comes to the inside of the left foot, right arm comes around behind you. Inhale as you exhale, dive your left arm underneath and see if those fingers come close together. Now, carefully release both hands down to the floor. You've done it with one hip and you did it with the other, but can you do it with both? Take a deep breath in, exhale, fold your body down, bend your knees, take your hands between your legs, and then wrap your right arm around your right hip, and wrap your left arm around your left hip, coming down to a low crouching position so that you can totally work the whole thing. Then gently release the hands to the floor. Take your hip props out and then try your forward fold. It should be 
incredibly low. I want you to use one of your props, right? It could be the rolled up towel, or it could be whatever else. It could even be your square. And you're gonna put it at the front of your mat and put your toes up on top of the blanket or up on top of the book or block or whatever you've used. Bend your knees and shift your hips backwards in space. So there's a lot of weight in your heels and there's not a lot of weight in your toes. That's so you don't overstretch your plantar fascia, right? If you lean forward, you're gonna get a lot of stretch through the plantar fascia, it might be too much. So lean back, take your right hand across to your left toes, drop the chin into the chest, whew, and breathe it out. And then come through center and switch. Take your left hand to your right foot. Drop your head down towards your front knee. And release and come back to center. Second position. Whatever you're using, climb on top of it so that it's in the arch of your foot and it's providing a little bit of arch massage. Now, this could be a block, so it won't be providing a lot of massage. So if you're up on your yoga blocks, Fantastic. If you're up on your rolled up blanket, fantastic. All the same. Come into a squat, feel the squat, and then straighten your legs out, wrap your hands back towards your heels, and see if you can pull your chest forward, walk your rib cage out on your thighs, and then fold back down into something deeper. I'm going to put my toes on the ground just so I don't tip over. Then release your hands to the floor in front of you. Put your heels up on the rolled up blanket or your heels up on the block and come all the way up to standing. So this would be like a high heel shoe situation. And what I like to remind people of is that when you're wearing a high heel shoe, the easiest way to stay upright is to collapse your chest. So you can't breathe. There's not a lot of circulation coming into your body, coming into your breath. And that's not really very good for you. So if you're gonna lift your body up, use a platform shoe where both the toes and the heels are lifted so that your chest can stay lifted as well. But let's prove it to ourselves. Come back down, step back to the middle, into the arch, and then step off to the back so that your heels are on the ground and your toes are up on the rolled up mat or block, and then come all the way up to standing here. So this would be like a negative heel shoe. In this position, you push your hips forward, rocket ship lift your chest up to the sky, and then imagine that you had something in your front pant pocket on the right and you needed somebody to get it. You know, in my house, you'd be holding a chicken or something, and you need somebody to get your car keys. You're like, hey, I'm holding that chicken. Can you get my car keys? So you move your right hip forward, right? And you're gonna feel that stretch in the right calf and the right Achilles tendon. Shift through center, take your left hip and move your left hip forward so you feel it over there. Come back to the center. In the center, put one hand on your belly button and the other on your sacrum. Pull the belly button hand up and push the sacrum hand down. Awesome. Now step off and feel how sturdy your legs are on the ground right now. That's amazing. We're gonna take it from this point into a lunge sequence that does use our rolled up mat or blanket or block, whichever you have at home. So I'll meet you at the front of the mat. Go ahead and step up. Inhale, both arms up to the sky. Exhale, dive your body down. Inhale, long flat back. You decide, walk, step, or jump to low push up. Inhale, flip both toes and look forward. And then exhale, flip both toes at the same time. Push back, downward facing dog. Inhale your right leg back into space. Push into the palm of your right hand. And then exhale, take it in knee to nose with your shoulders over your wrists. Inhale, take it back. And exhale, take it in. Inhale, take it back. Exhale, take it in. One more, inhale back. Exhale, take it in. Step on your right leg. Move your left leg a little to the left and take both arms up to the sky, come high. Now bring those hands behind your low back, interlace, roll your shoulders back and down, and squeeze your elbows closer to one another to open the chest. As you exhale,
exhale, fold forward. Bring your chest down to your right knee, your chin down into your chest, and maybe your hands will lift up a little bit. Alternatively, you could have your left fist on the floor, or you could have your left knee on the floor. If this original position is easy, turn your back heel down to the ground, shift your body to the left, and then drop your chin further and see if you can come into a deep, humble warrior. When you release your hands, bring them down to the floor, place your left knee on the ground, and then find one of your rolled up props or your block and put it on the inside of your right thigh, not on the top of your right thigh, but the inside of your right thigh, here. Then cross, left elbow over the right knee. I'm going to face the other way so you can see it. Cross your left elbow over your right knee, and then take your right thumb to the crease of your hip, and lift your back knee up off the floor. Now I love this pose, and for me it actually feels better the thicker, the bigger the thing that you put in your hip. So I'm just going to take two of them. What? Rainy day magic. Place that in there. Then go ahead and lift your back knee up off the floor and hold it steady. I like to use the left hand to remind the right shoulder or the right pec to twist a little bit further. Bend your back knee almost to the floor, one, and then pick it up. Bend your back knee to the floor, two, and then pick it back up. One more time, bend it, three, pick it up. Take your left hand to the front left corner of the mat, start to step your back leg forward until you can turn to the right and sit down on the ground. The props are still here. Send your left knee forward. And then beginners, take your right hand to your right knee. Intermediate, left hand to right knee. Advanced, left elbow to right knee. And we're not going to try to twist deeply. What we are going to do is lift the chest up, pull the knee up, and feel the compression over the prop. What this is doing is it's opening the back of your right hip, it's opening your lower back, and it's pressing into your viscera, it's pressing into your diaphragm. So it's loosening up the tissue on the front body that will allow you to stand taller and breathe more deeply. So let's hold this for five, four, three, your lunge, and then recross into the twist, crossing your left elbow over your right knee. Let's put the back knee on the floor, and I bet you can go a little bit further. So if you lift up, slide your abdomen over your thigh, and then deepen the twist, hold it there. You're about to get quite a surprise, because the prop has been working for you this whole time. Hold here and breathe for five, four, three, two. Now on one, take your props out. Immediately inhale, lift up, exhale, turn your right knee a little to the left and see if you can bring your knee to the back of your left shoulder. It can be wrist, elbow, or all the way in. Now you're far into that twist. You could take both hands to your right hip, or you could lay your right arm across your low back. Take a deep breath in and use your exhalation to slide your hand underneath your thigh. Sometimes to cheat, I'll turn my right toes to the right, which makes it a little bit easier. And then once you've got it, oh, you turn those toes back forward. Lift your back knee up off the floor. Whatever you have, carefully take your hands to your right knee. Inhale up to a high lunge. 
and then exhale, open out to the side, warrior two. There's a little bend in both knees that allows your low back to stay long. You take your left hand to your hip and the right arm to the sky. Inhale up high. And as you exhale, take your right elbow down to your right knee. Again, I'm just going to turn around for convenience, but you can stay. So the right elbow is on the right knee. And then you need your blocks again, or your props. I'm going to put in one, two, three. What if I put in four? Let's find out. So I would just put in one or two if you're trying it out. And then bring that right hand down to the floor. And what this is doing is it's pressing into your inter intercostal area, right? The space between your ribs. Also a little bit to the side, it might be getting the beginning of serratus anterior. And on your quad, it's working into the top of the quad and the inner thigh. So these are all good things to get a massage on. Take your right arm across your low back, drop your chin into your chest and look between your legs, and then uh, take your right arm and wrap it around your hip. So left arm behind the low back, right arm around the right hip, and maybe you're reaching toward the bind. Maybe you still have your right hand on the floor. That's all good. But whatever you have, you're going to hold it for five. Hold it for four. Hold it for three. Hold it for two. And then on one, take your toys out, or your toy out, and try the pose again. Be careful, because you might actually fall over in it. All right, you try that same bind. When you release, take both hands down to the floor, place your left knee on the ground, and send it back a half an inch. Turn your right toes to the right and your right knee to the right, and then reach your right hand back behind you, and see if you can grab your foot. If you don't have your foot, keep it on the ground or lift your knee up. If you do have your foot, try pulling it in a little bit or hooking it with your right elbow and then turning your right knee and foot forward again. Gently release what you have and step back to downward facing dog. That was side one. And your two sides, they should feel wildly different now. Inhale your left leg back into space. Push into the palm of the left hand. Exhale, pull in, knee to nose. Inhale, take it back. Exhale, pull in. Inhale, take it back. Exhale, pull in. One more. Inhale, take it back. Exhale, pull in, step on it. Your right foot can move a little to the right. And then take both arms up towards the sky. Bring those hands behind your low back. Interlace the fingers. Change the interlock of your fingers and roll your chest open. Inhale, heart rises. Exhale, forward fold. Bring your left shoulder down to your left knee. Bring your chin to your chest. And if you're lifting hands, hands can come up. The easier variation is right fist down to the floor or back knee on the ground. The harder variation is the right heel turns to the floor, you shift your head and shoulders to the right, and then dive your head down towards the ground. Not to the ground, but just before it, so you're still using your leg strength. And then release both hands down, and put your right knee on the ground. This is where we need the first of our props. So you're going to put a prop in, take your right elbow and cross it over your left knee and breathe here. Now I know some of you are probably using the, the rolled up blanket for the first time and you're thinking, "Ooh, this feels crazy. But let me tell you, since it's stimulating and relaxing your vagus nerve, once you finish doing some of this work, as long as you're cautious and careful, you're going to feel absolutely amazing for the rest of the day. To progress, lift your back knee off the floor, take your left thumb to the crease of your left hip and push it back. The right hand can touch the chest and roll it open, and then bend your back knee down, maybe to the floor, and pick it up. 
and then try again. Ready? Down. And pick it up. Good. And down. And pick it up. Take your right hand and bring it to the front right corner of the mat. Start to shift your late weight forward, walking that back foot in until you can turn everything to the left and easily sit down on the ground. Just push your right knee forward a little bit more. Tuck the props into that inner thigh. And beginners, hold your left knee with your left hand. Intermediate, hold the left knee with your right hand. And then advanced, you can wrap your elbow around the knee. But it's not the twist. It's the lift, the straightness of the spine, the pull of the knee in and up towards the ceiling. And then we breathe for five, four, three, two, and one. On one, keep the props turned back to the front of the mat. Recross your right elbow over your left knee and hold. Now because this is the second time we're coming in, you can put the right knee on the floor, lift your torso a little bit, slide your abdomen over your left thigh, and then come back down. Now hold this one for five. Four. It can be knee on or off the floor. Three. But if the knee is on the floor, this is all going to be a little bit easier. Two. Feel it. And then one. And on one, you take the props out. Turn your left knee to the right. Inhale. And as you exhale, cross your arm over. Try and get the right shoulder to the outside of the left knee. Now remember, if you went really, really far, I'm going to get this extra piece, right? If you go really, really far, you can turn your left toes a little bit to the left, bring your left arm behind your back, and then go in between your legs in search of your hands. <laughs> I'm going to leave that in there because we're all just playing a crazy game of trying to do these poses. So, you know, if you reach through and you've got it, great. But the other thing you can do is you could grab onto your hip this way. The super way to cheat the pose if you're close but you don't have it is to turn all of your toes to the left and then dive your hand through because it gives you a little bit of extra space and then you start to bring it back into your original position. Carefully extricate yourself from the pose. Plant your hands firmly onto your front knee. Inhale, the arms reach up to the sky. Exhale, open out to the side. Turn the outer edge of your right heel down. And then just make sure that your low back is long and the knees are a little bit bent. Right hand comes to the hip, left arm to the sky. Inhale, high. And then exhale, bring that left elbow down to the knee. And I'm just going to turn around so that you can see it here as well. But you can stay. If you need your prop, one, two, however many you used on the other side. And put the prop on the inside of your right leg. I actually like the foam roller because it's a little bit more intense. And then take that left arm and put it, uh, take the right arm, put it across your low back. Pause. Drop your head down, look between your legs, and take your left arm and try to wrap that around so your fingers are touching together. And hold this for five. Four. Maybe you roll your chest back open to feel a new release. Three. Two. And one. On one, you can take your props out. Then try the pose again. 
And now with all of your blocks out of the way, it should feel so easy to come into this bind, side angle pose, Parsva Konasana, and then take both hands down to the ground, put your right knee on the floor, and turn your left toes and your left knee to the left. Turn your chest to the left, and reach your left hand back behind you, bend the knee, grab the foot. If you can't grab your foot, you're just gonna lift your back knee off the floor and hold in a deep lunge. Or if you can grab it, pull it in, see if you can slide it down your arm a little bit, and then turn your left toes to face forward and your left knee to face forward. Carefully release what you have and step back to downward facing dog. Vinyasa through, inhale, pull forward, Exhale, lower down. Inhale, forward facing dog. Exhale, press back, downward facing dog. Bend your knees and either walk, step, or hop to the front of the mat. Inhale, long, flat back. Exhale, fold your body down. Roll it all the way up to standing. Inhale, arms come high. And exhale, take your hands to prayer position in front of your heart.